Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be part two of the uh, two part series from this past weekend at Auto Club Speedway. My first uh, video, I ran a 146 flat. That was on Saturday. This is on Sunday, the first session of the day. And uh, already entering the bowl at a slower speed, actually. But I downshift to get the car in the high RPMs and get some more power down and make up some of that ground. Entering turn three, I get a good entry. That sets up for a good turn four and a good turn four exit. Um, heading down this straight to the double 90s. And uh, I like to treat this as a double apex. Um, on the exit of the turn, you can swing wide if you need to. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, this time I, I don't really swing too wide. But heading down towards the chicane, I see this car not going very fast in front of me. And it kind of holds me up a little bit. Uh, I'm not full throttle. But on the exit, entering uh, this turn right here, I uh, make that pass. I knew if uh, I was going to make this a, a, a PB lap, I needed to make that pass as soon as possible. And uh, thankfully, it was very smooth, not sketchy, didn't scare him, didn't scare me, and, and we were all good. Heading down towards the playground, keep an eye on the brake telemetry. You see it blink red a few times. That's me pumping the brakes. Uh, it's a common tactic for uh, some skilled drivers out there. It's something that I'm learning myself. Uh, it's called left foot pumping. Basically what that does is it pressurizes your brake pedal. That way when you hop on the brake in your actual braking zone, the pedal is extremely firm and uh, gives you max bite right off the bat. So uh, a really nice tactic that I'm trying to pick up and learn and, and use a lot. But uh, yeah, it just depends on the track and the corners as well. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this lap with a 145.1. Welcome back. So uh, now that you've seen my PB lap, I wanted to go ahead and throw this video in. We're coming out on track for our third session of the day. And uh, we're hanging out with Will from WR Technica and uh, one of his uh, guys that he had with them. Um, it's a 458 Ferrari. And uh, Will in the GT3 with the big wing. So uh, trying to see if I can hang with the big dogs and... Uh, let them go by me um, <clears throat> so that way I could have some fun and play with these guys. So uh, entering turn three, trying to build up some momentum, catch up to these guys because I let them have a lot of ground. Uh, exiting, or sorry, uh, yeah, exiting turn two, which is the uh, NASCAR oval turn. Guy in the, the dude in Ferrari is pretty fast. Uh, that car is uh, pretty quick have never driven one of those but uh, that's definitely one of the cars that I you know want to check off my bucket list for sure um, it's always been my dream car when I was looking for uh, a GT3 um, I thought oh let me check to see if the 458 is uh, you know anywhere near that ballpark but no man 458s are still up in the over two hundred thousand dollar range so out of my ballpark uh, and I went ahead and picked up the GT3 instead. So getting really close to them now. Uh, the GT3 has the advantage with uh, the braking zones. Not necessarily saying that that's how it is all the time, but uh, I, you know, I just swapped out the pads and rotors to a more aggressive compound. And really, the DS111 Ferrodo pads were amazing all day long. So I was very impressed and enjoyed them a lot no complaints so far with them uh, we'll see with a couple more events see how how the pad wears down and all that uh, the Ferrari I think he's done um, I don't think he's uh, planning on uh, running any more laps with us I can't remember if he did or not but uh, will slows down so I can catch up to him and uh, like I had said on Monday's video I really wanted to get behind will and learn his line Unfortunately, it was uh, the tarmac was a little hotter uh, than earlier in the day. The times that we were setting down, 
especially going back and forth and, and pushing each other, were definitely not near our optimal times. We were running 148s. I think a 148.2 is the best time that we ran. Uh, when you consider that though, that is still faster than the PB that I had in my F80. So pretty gnarly that even in our slowest lap, uh, our slowest sessions, we were st I was still able to beat the F80's uh, PB. Um, in a future video, I want to go ahead and compare the two laps side by side since I have data for both the GT3's lap and the F80's lap and we can go ahead and break down exactly what is going on what lines were taken um, I can even throw on a Google Earth document so that way we can see the difference in lines and go from there I think that'll be very interesting to see for a lot of people who are debating on whether to get an F80 uh, as a price effective uh, car over the GT3 which is a bit more expensive but um, you know the performance is, is there right out of the box so try to keep up with Will looks like he beat me probably by like a second maybe a little more than a second um, and then he gives up the position to, uh, to follow me and uh, if you can look up in my rear view mirror I cut down low not being able to see exactly where he is and I actually got really close to uh, I mean I definitely cut him off I don't know actually how close it was, but I felt really bad afterwards and I apologized to him um, for cutting him off like that in the bull turn because it's pretty sketch. That bull turn is pretty sketchy. Um, so starting to pick up the pace now and uh, trying to see if I can lose him. Going down into the uh, double 90s. Exiting the double 90s a little wide with a little oversteer on exit. Back on throttle. And through the chicane where Will is extremely fast, I'm not as fast as Will, and I, I uh, definitely felt comfortable going through there. You can see in the rearview mirror, you can actually see him poking around back there. A little bit of oversteer on the exit here. He's right there on my ass. Um, he's not going anywhere. He's attached to my hip the entire time. Uh, if you guys don't know who Will is, he is a uh, pro driver. Uh, he is also uh, he owns WR Technica. I think he's a FIA Silver driver. Um, I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but um, he also races in NASA and won Global Time Attack at at Button Willow this past year with uh, his co-driver. They drove a uh, GTR full aero kit, just insane build. And I slowed down to let him catch up and, and take over from there. We were probably running a 47 to be honest with you, but we kept slowing down like this on the straight. And uh, I wanted to get one more lap behind him to see exactly what he's doing differently than I am. And sure enough, obviously the wing makes a big difference. Starting to pull on me. He's probably wide open throttle while I'm partial throttle there. Finally getting back on full throttle, entering turn three. He's starting to grease up a little bit. He's on AR1s. I think he said they were pretty heat cycled out. So uh, his tires are, are, and this was probably like lap, oh, this is lap four. Um, but he had been out there for a little longer than I have. So he's probably about lap six. Um, so his, his AR1s are pretty toast um, for the session. Coming down to the chicane. And once again, he shows his speed uh, as I don't have that same speed just yet. I really want to uh, to get there though. That's one of the spots I want to make up. Dealing with some oversteer. I could have passed Will right there, but um, it was pretty dope to see him slide the GT3. Uh, if you guys have never driven a GT3, sliding one is exceptionally difficult um, just because it's a rear engine drive. It's like a pendulum back there and uh, seeing him get this thing sideways and control it is pretty mesmerizing honestly i watch videos of chris harris drifting gt3s and i'm just kind of mind blown i don't think people really appreciate that as much as it needs to be appreciated because that is a very difficult thing to do coming down finish line straight he's got some serious oversteer again pretty dope ass little drift right there and uh that is it we bring it in and and that's it so uh, if you guys have any questions on this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, just drop your comments or questions in the comment section below. I'll get back to it as soon as possible. 
other than that I got nothing else for you guys uh, if there's anything that you guys would like to see please drop in the comment section I'm open to suggestions a lot of guys are asking about the F80 M3 the F80 is still at the shop uh, if you guys missed my last video on the F80 I talk about what's going down on that so go ahead and check that out um, that'll answer any of your questions as to why it's not being tracked right now but I got a couple more events coming up pretty soon here with the GT3 one this weekend one the following weekend and uh, one after that it's gonna be pretty pretty busy this uh, coming month so uh, stick around hope you guys are enjoying the track content and uh, yeah take it easy